is to crush the pigment onto the surface of the canvas. I really started out painting light when I was a young kid. I was a background artist. Now, almost institutional. His art is well recognized mm -hmm. as being amongst the most important in the world. sitting with Chuck this afternoon, early this afternoon, and spending some time with him and hearing him talk about his work, his life. And he's working now, every day. That's what he loves to do. And um, he revealed a bit. He said, the one thing that I found out was I really couldn't try to figure out how to please people. We didn't have any surveys. We didn't have anybody feeding things back to us. So I guess I figured out and the guys I worked with, we figured we better please ourselves. We better make sure that we're pleased with this, that this stuff is okay. So what happens, by a natural and wonderful and almost osmosis process, they create timeless things. So Bugs and Pepe Le Pew and all of these characters wind up in these wonderful films that are just as valid in 1998 as they were the very minute they were produced. They become little timeless classic masterpieces and all through a very natural process of one, well I don't know, necessarily know how to please you guys, but I'm gonna try to please myself and two, as Chuck told me, never talk down to anybody. A man who, who still today influences perhaps one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, Steven Spielberg and Ron Howard, guys who look at Chuck's films and say, yeah, I get that. Yeah, that means something to me. I know what to do with that. So you're looking at, a, at an American icon. It means people that ask me if I enjoy being on tour. I don't, I don't enjoy being on tour, so I don't go on tour. <laughs> But when we have a special occasion like this, this beautiful gallery who are very enthusiastic about these things, why make, occasionally make a trip. But I, let me tell you why it, it uh, means so much to me, because when I was, um, when we were making the films, nobody paid any attention to us at all. Up to the time, 1963, when the last, uh, the original group were finished, uh, no one paid any attention to us. We got our first attention really from, uh, from France. And France was the first ones, you, I don't know you remember, that France were the first people to recognize American jazz as an art form, long before anybody in America understood how great it was. And they had the same feeling about animation. That, that's why a thing like this is very meaningful, because I meet you people as individuals, and you come up and tell me how much you enjoyed the pictures, and I, I, I bathe in that, because it's wonderful, because before all we could do was go to the theater and see whether they laugh or not. Anyway, we do thank you for coming because it is a privilege. And never, never question, never, never question that when you say something to, uh, if we qualify as artists, saying something of appreciation to an artist is really the most endearing and wonderful thing that can happen to him. If, if you want to show your appreciation, laugh in the theater and clap. But if you want to talk to him personally, tell him you think he's pretty good. He won't agree with you, but he'll certainly uh, be appreciative. Uh, my husband, we're, we're big fans. Like I said, we've grown up with you and just really enjoyed your artwork and the music and the whole the whole thing. Did you ever think? Did you ever think drawing pictures would get you here? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, my teacher used to say, "You'll, you'll never get any places just scribbling those drawings." Oh well, I'm glad you proved your teacher wrong. <laughs> I'm too. <laughs> it's easy, of course, to, to care for somebody like Bugs, but the trick is getting me and the audience to care for the coyote or Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck is, is probably, I, I would dream about being Bugs Bunny, but I wake up and it's Daffy Duck that's in bed.